The speed of light is just plain weird. Well, let's, it's weird in many, many different ways and for many different reasons, but let's focus on the number right now. It's defined to be uh, 299,792,458 meters per second. That's right, I said defined. The speed of light is defined to be a specific value, which at first glance doesn't make any sense at all. Because why? How? How? Like, just how do we even do this? How? How, how do we get off doing this? It's a fundamental constant of nature. Shouldn't we be measuring it? Shouldn't there be some uncertainty in it? Shouldn't there be a little plus or minus? Like we have, we have performed some experiments and we have uh, determined that the speed of light is blah, 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 plus or minus, blah, blah, uh, to, to 1 billion percent precision, whatever. No, it's defined. It's defined to be a very specific number. And the reason it's defined to be a specific number is that it doesn't matter. It's arbitrary. It's made up. Who cares what the number is? The speed of light is just the speed of light. Who cares? And it's a speed, right? It has units. It has dimensions. It's, it's 299 million blah, 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 meters per second. It can tell you how far light can go over a specific amount of time, how many meters it can travel in seconds. So in order to define the speed of light, you need to define the units. So if I say it's 299 million meters per second, you say, well, what's a meter and what's a second? I said, well, okay, well, a long time ago, we, we decided that a meter should be like yay long, and it's, it's defined to be a certain fraction of the Earth's circumference. In a second, well, we have this orbit around the sun, and it's a year, and we've divided it up into certain intervals, and the smallest interval we call a second. It's made up. We made up what a meter is. A meter is this long, a second is that long and then in these defined units uh the speed of light as as this value but it doesn't matter what it is because we have to define what a meter is and we have to define what a second is if we knew precisely what a meter is and precisely what a second is then yeah you could go about measuring the speed of light but what a meter is and what a second is are totally made up and totally arbitrary so instead, what we do, instead of trying to define the meter and define the second, pin that down and measure the speed of light, instead we define the speed of light and use that to measure how long a meter and a second are. Who cares? It's the exact same thing. In order to find the speed of light, you also have to define your lengths and you have to define your times. And so all three go together. You can't get one without the other. That said, there is something special about the speed of light. There is something special about the speed of light in that it appears in the special theory of relativity. It didn't have to. It's almost by pure coincidence, uh, Einstein was working on special relativity. He realized that there's this unified connection, there's this intimate connection between space and time when there didn't have to be. We didn't have to live in a universe where space and time lived in a unified framework, in a four-dimensional universe, but they do. Special relativity is the language that allows us to work in a four-dimensional universe, and it tells us that space and time are on equal footing. But space is very spacey, and time is very timey. They're two different things. We measure space with meters and feet and miles, and we measure time with, with seconds and hours. You know, how, how can these two things be on equal footing? You need a conversion tool. You need a tool. You need a number that lets you convert from space units to time units. And what kind of unit is that? That's a speed. Speeds convert distances to times and times to speeds. They give you a relationship between distance and time. And so a constant appears in the special theory of relativity. It's the speed of, it's, it's just called constant. See, sorry, I almost got ahead of myself. But you know where I'm going. It's just called C, the constant. The special relativity says that this constant exists. It's a fund, fundamental interaction between space and time. It tells us how to translate between space and time and time and space, but it doesn't say what that number is. 
For that, you need to turn to Maxwell's equations. And when you merge special relativity with Maxwell's equations, you find that this constant that appears in special relativity, this fundamental number that connects space and time, is the speed of light. Didn't have to be the speed of light. It could have been something else in the universe. It just so happens that light travels at this fundamental speed. And so that's why the speed of light holds such a central importance in physics. When really, if it weren't for special relativity, the speed of light would be an interesting number the same way the speed of sound is an interesting number. It depends on some physics, properties of electricity and magnetism and the va vacuum, blah, blah, blah. Okay, it's a number you would learn once. And that's it. And then forget by the end of the day. But because light also travels at this very fundamental speed that appears in special relativity. It does play a very critical role. And it is a very important number, but the actual value of the number doesn't matter. But you know what does matter? Patreon.com matters. Patreon.com slash PM Sutter is how you can keep this show going. Thank you so much. I truly do appreciate all the contributions. And uh, like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you next week.